Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey. Yo. <laughs> he is always so excited to be here. I love that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yay, I'm here. Wow. <laughs> and what Sometimes are we talking I'd be excited. about? Huh? Sometimes I'm like, hi. <laughs> Oh, that? Spit all over you people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all happy and stuff, and we're about to talk about some dark ass shit today. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Dark shit. Let's just bring but, everybody down. <laughs> not the fun a, dark yeah, shit. Yeah, I was just about to say this is not fun dark shit. This is yeah, gross this dark is, shit. This is serious shit. Dropping some serious knowledge. Yeah, I don't know about knowledge. More of yeah, a... I think it's more of a warning. Yeah, that's go. the word I was looking for. Actually, so, I had found that word. You just said it first. Thanks. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't looking for it. It was right there. It's just your mouth is quicker. Uh. Okay. So now that we have discussed that we're going to be talking about some dark shit but have yet to say it, what are we talking about? Witch hunt. Yes. But not the history of what is happening today. What is going on in the world and even here in your own backyards as of this time period. So. So we're uh, not talking about the Salem witch trials. Please. <laughs> <laughs> not what we're doing we're letting you know that outside of that little bubble you live in on social media <laughs> still shit happens still like shit still happens like it, it's time to realize that some of the things you do come with repercussions and stigma so i guess we might as well get into this um obviously the point we're trying to make is uh People are still very much so in harm's way all around the world. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not just in one place. It's not just, oh, that's only happening there. It's it's pretty much everywhere. It is. Um, and it and like she said, it is now. Like we're not talking past tense. Like literally, as we speak, things are happening. So and granted, um, other countries, so all of us are in the U.S., if you all kind of know this by now, um, I'm not going to pretend and not, and not uh, try to over-exaggerate and say that things are really, really bad here in the U.S. because we are in a fortunate place where um, it's not as bad as what you are seeing in other countries. But it doesn't mean that issues and... Um, things to be worried about don't exist here in the U.S. It's just a little bit more obscure. You don't but, publicly hear about it all the time or yeah. very often. So who wants to start? Um, I guess I will. Okay. So for one, you guys, uh, I don't know if I make it obvious or not, but I'm not the biggest fan of religious folks. Um, just, you know, my personal history with them has not been great. So while I was looking into this topic, I stumbled across a few different forums where people were actively gathered talking about negative things that supposedly witches had done to them. Um, oh, they cursed my son, and they need Jesus, and won't 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 all that shit. And, and that was based here in the United States. Uh -huh. um, again, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this on at least one other episode. There was something within the last year where somebody in Texas was physically assaulted in Texas. Um, and, you know, Texas is, is a huge hub of magical practices. And, and pagan practices. Mm -hmm. And religious people. 
So yeah. So they're going to rub shoulders there. And, you know, you've got to keep in mind that, yes, it is more accepted socially than it has ever been. But there are still people out there that really just genuinely hear witchcraft and automatically think you're fucking with the devil. Quite literally. <laughs> Some of them think you're having sex with the devil. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. It, it so is weird. I, I, it is problematic. And like I said, uh, this is just the one aspect of it, though. This is just the religious folks doing this. There are people who are not religious who are obviously opposed to it as well. Yeah, but but I have to say, I mean, based on what I've seen as well, that it's it is predominantly uh, those of Abrahamic religions, and this is you know not to bash on them or anything, but I you know let's face it, I mean, from what they believe, it's the it's the polar opposite. What or what we do is supposedly to them the polar opposite of what um of what they stand for and unfortunately the 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 crux of that is their misconception and misunderstanding of it and um hestia's hestia's right i mean i have i've I've mentioned this before you know i challenged you guys at one point to do a, a google search especially on youtube and to just, you know, look for things. Don't search for witch hunt, by the way, because all you're going to get is, like, Trump and Minecraft shit. Um, <laughs> exactly. so you have to get a little bit more creative with your keywords. But, yeah. uh, but I was not just looking at the videos. I started looking at the comments. And, yeah. and uh, that's absolutely right. Just about everything that has gone wrong in these people's lives, they are turning around and blaming it on witchcraft they're oh, yeah. talking about um i at my place of employment i know that there's a few couple of witches there i know that they've cursed me i know that they've hexed me um the my my husband left me uh is moved in with this this girl and out, out of the blue and i know she's a witch um they they really truly believe that it is the modern day witch of today a lot of them are very aware that the witchcraft community has grown they're very aware that it's becoming more mainstream they're very aware that it's growing and it scares them it scares them because again it it it's they have an idea of who we are and i have to go on my soapbox for a second okay and i'm gonna tell you if you've got in your mind that you want to go out there and you want to spread the word and clear up everybody's misconceptions about it stop don't yeah because listen Belief and faith is a strong thing. And that's, I'm not saying that in a bad way. That's a beautiful thing. But, you know, what is faith to begin with? Faith, you, faith doesn't require proof, okay? It doesn't matter what kind of proof. If this is what they believe, this is what they believe. In this research, I came across multiple articles written by pastors and clergymen who honestly seemed very well versed on what we do and um unfortunately a lot of it was wiccan based and a lot of them still think wicca equals witch that's a whole nother discussion but the point being is that they talk about you know the whole love and light shit and they talk about the earth and everything and they recognize that they will describe it in a way that's like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then they will say, and that is what Satan wants you to believe. They will still, it doesn't matter. So don't try. <laughs> Just don't try. Save yourself some heartache and possibly a black eye and just don't try. Just trying to save you all. <laughs> yeah. Don't be all evangelical like them. And that's the other thing too is that 
witchcraft is personal. Okay. Uh, we say, I, we say that a lot. I say that a lot, but I mean that in a different sense today. What I mean by that is that, you know, we walk our paths. Yes, we may be part of traditions and we walk, you know, the path of those traditions, but we walk our individual paths and, and, and this is us. Um, we are not here to go out and proselytize and to convert. That is not our role. Don't, don't try to turn the tables and do the same thing, okay? We need to fix ourselves first. We focus on ourselves. Um, it's not our job or our business to go out there and preach to others and can be a witch and everything's okay with a witch. I, I, uh, because it's, it's a beautiful thing. Because if they don't want to hear it, they're not going to listen. And they have, honestly, that right. And I'm sorry. And, and this is going to sound like bashing and, hmm, oh, well. Here, okay, this is how I feel. Just take, just pick a branch of fucking an Abrahamic faith. It doesn't matter which one. It could be Catholicism, Christianity, Islam. Each one of those has different sects. Sects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, like, they can't even agree on what their own fucking religion fucking says. So until they come together and can comprehend their own shit, I don't expect them to comprehend mine. Uh, yeah, they that's don't, true. I'm sorry, but you don't understand your own fucking shit. You, nobody can agree on what the fucking Bible is telling them. So if y'all can't figure that shit out and this is what you fucking believe, don't, don't talk to me about it. Because one, yes. you didn't give a fuck. Two, <laughs> you're not going to do, you're not going to have the same respect for me if I try to tell you about my shit. You, you see what I'm saying? That's why it's just a conversation that you should avoid having because both of you are going to end up pissed off. Yeah. And I, what, what worries? And I'm sorry, but you might have an aneurysm trying to understand what that person is trying to explain to you. Like, <laughs> it's not going to make sense because it doesn't make sense to them. So it's not going to make sense to you. What worries me is that, you know, I see kids especially, and I'm sorry of calling you out, um, but I do think it's more of a younger mindset that tends to do this. You know, they come in okay. and they ask things like, how do I convince my parents? How do I convince my mm -hmm. teachers? How do I show them? And, and, and you know what? It's, it's a, valiant, it's a valiant thought to have. It is. And I've had it. Like, I get, because I'm on that threshold. Like, I'm a millennial by birth. I grew up around people who were at least a decade or more older than me. So I have a little bit of both traits. Granted, my millennial traits are much stronger, but I do have some of that sarcastic, you know better, don't be naive type mentality, too. So there was a point in time where I was very much like, I have to prove people wrong. I have to show them that they're wrong. Wouldn't they want to know that they're wrong? I would want to yeah. know if I was wrong. Not everybody is you. And don't forget, that, that other person is saying the exact same thing to themselves. Yep. Yep. I want to show why, you yeah, show why you're you. wrong. Exactly. And so trust me, save yourself the time and just you live like that. If you feel like what you're doing is right, you live like that. Because yeah. everything is going to play out as it should. If and you, on, honestly, ahead. honestly, to me, that is, to me, that's going to be the most important message of today is we're not telling everybody to, well, even though I've said it before, shut the fuck up. Uh, but I say that because it's the proselytizing stuff that I'm telling everybody to mm -hmm. shut the fuck up. You do you, you be you, you know, I'm not saying that we all have to go underground and hide again, although things were much better when that was the case, but uh, I'll shut up now, but yeah, I'm um, here uh, recording a podcast for everybody to see <laughs> right. across multiple platforms. <laughs> but I'm not saying like, don't hide who you are, but I'm also saying don't advertise it and don't, yeah, don't publicize it. it don't push it down somebody's throat just, just like yeah. you don't want them to push it down your throat don't don't do that you know if you 
who like these kids that are like, <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm drawing pentagrams on my notebook and it's making my teacher upset. Well, stop fucking drawing it in neon signs and showing it for everybody to see. It's not show and tell. You know, no. pentagrams are not an aesthetic. There are a purpose for them. It's not there to decorate your books, okay? If you put it on there as a protection symbol, that's great. But if somebody calls you out on it, then be prepared to have that conversation. But don't try to convince them that um, that you're right and they're wrong. Because in their eyes, they're right and you're wrong. And hmm. sometimes we're going to have to just agree to disagree. Exactly. I mean, and you're only going to get yourself in trouble. Oh, yeah. You know. And you're going to get us in trouble. Yeah. We don't need I'm, that, please. I'm sorry. Uh, I will be the first to admit it. And I've actually already admitted this in other podcasts. Is that one of my main reasons for trying to spread the word on misinformation and misconceptions and telling everybody to shut the fuck up and just, you know, calm your ass down and just do your own thing and don't worry about anybody else? It's because I'm protecting my ass because, and this is going to piss off a lot of people that are probably going to hear this. And, and I'm going to try to say, I'm sorry, but deep down inside, I'm really not. Sorry, not sorry moment. There's a number of you that are literally coming through this because it's the latest fad and a year, maybe two years tops from now, you won't be around. Okay. But many of us will still be. And we're going to have to pick up the pieces of, of the shitstorm, of the misconceptions, the stuff that other people, such as these re religious zealots, are, are picking up on and noticing. We no longer fly under the radar. We officially are out there in the open for all to see and for all to know that we are alive and well. And yay for us, but also scary for us. Absolutely, dude. It is scary because, I mean, while re just researching this topic and stuff for this weekend, what do you call it? I saw so many articles about witches being live and well and in the open and how the practice, you know, the practice of witchcraft has, like, you know, quadrupled in, like, the last five years and you know, how to spot a witch in your how to community. Spot, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How to I, spot I've seen a lot of those, a lot of, you, you, a lot of YouTube videos, how yeah. to spot us, how to know if we practice. Exactly. And it was, it was really, it was really unnerving and a little scary that people are taking so much notice of how big it is right now and how they're sitting there making a list because of the new people coming in who are flaunting it and thinking they have to tell the world from mm -hmm. people at school from you know um people on the streets that they barely met like in in passing you know and it's just very unnerving these lists that i actually saw of how it to tell is. like one of one of them was ridiculous. If they wear all black and their hair is dyed black, and this, I was like, that that's not a witch. That's just a goth kid. Leave them alone. Yeah, you know. But or some it, people like to wear black because it's slimming. Okay. And and it's going to be ridiculous shit, you know. But nonetheless, okay. you know, still, I mean, I, one of the videos I came across uh, was telling his parishioners that uh, don't do acupuncture because that's based on occultism. You know, so, so there's a lot of things that, uh, yeah, are far reaching and far out there, but we as a community, we've, we've done that. We've done that to ourselves. We put ourselves out there and mind you, not all of us have been thrilled about that because we didn't mm -hmm. get a say. No, we didn't get the vote. <laughs> we didn't say, Hey, let's open the door, the barn yard, the barn door is wide open for new admissions, you know? We didn't have a we didn't have an admission process or anything, and I mean, for those of us who have been doing this for so long, it's really kind of annoying. It's a nuisance in kind of a way. At least that's how I feel. It's, it's a nuisance a, it, for me. It's unnerving. It has yeah. scared me. It has scared me for the last 
two years or so, I honestly have been fearful. As I've moved up, like, uh, same with you, especially in the vicinity that I live in, because I live in the Bible Belt, and Billy Graham's a big influence around here. So it's a very big uh, evangelist or, you know, place. And they take things to the extreme around here. Yeah. And I mean, and, th and those are the people, we'll be talking about other countries here in a second, but those are the people that I am fearful of here in the U.S. I am uh -huh. fearful of those that have a screw loose and who, oh, or two, or, or four, <laughs> and, um, and feel like they have to, quote unquote, do God's word or, um, you know, go out and slain those that uh, practice things other than, you know, Christianity or, and if you think they don't exist, I'm, going to, I'm going to remind you of the matchings of um, several areas um, of people, of Muslims, Muslims. Uh, yes, I get it. There was there have also been some, you know, some Muslims who have been uh, also caught doing mass shootings of like, you know, uh, army bases and such. But we've also seen the opposite. So if, if they're going, if they're going to do that for other faiths, why aren't they going to you know, what makes you think that they're not thinking about doing that for other practices? Yeah, and what makes you think we're not on that list? And um, I, so I brought up something, I think, in our first season uh, about uh, this video that went viral on Facebook of um, this woman that had found a jar that looked like some curse workings at a cemetery that some idiot left it out in the open for all to see. And that is that kind of shit. We don't need that kind of advertisement. No, because, because not not only did she video it, not only did she post it all over, not only did it go viral, she also took it the, to the police because she saw she saw things in there that granted chances are the person got them from a grocery store, like a you know like a body parts of, of an animal. Right. Um, but those are those are. Those are not things that we need you to be advertising. Yeah, let's not leave that. That's that is why some of the important instructions are to either throw that thing in the river or bury it, people. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do it in the cemetery, that's awesome. That's great. Bury it. Don't make sure. up there. Don't put a sign, neon sign. Look what I just did. Right? Because <laughs> you know that you know them. Sure, they sat there and dusted for fingerprints. Besides crazy woman's, you know, and you know, that, that just brings too much. I mean, leaving your spell jars out in the cemetery is none acceptable. Yeah. You but, know. Um, so well, I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, that's just, that is like the real minor aspect of it. That's the, the type of things that are going on here with religious people or just whatever. Um, Compared to the rest of the world, it's, minor. It's yeah. very, very oh, yeah. mild. Mm -hmm. um, so Although before, before we go on to the, the other countries, um, Mountain Gypsy, I do want you to, to share that uh, the article that you found about the husband that murdered his <clears> wife and daughter. <throat> So, doing my research, I had discussed this with Bella this weekend, or this past week, when I did do some of the research, and let me pull it up, like, because, so the article touches on all over the world, but towards the end, it talks about here in the United States, because it's a U, uh, U.S., um, uh, let me see, it, it's a newspaper from here in the U.S. itself, so... I'm going to pull it up because I was smart and I saved it. And so this is an article from, I want to say, it's from the New York Times. And it was from 
It's from a couple years ago, or a rec actually quite a few years ago, it's 2014, but still relevant because this man decided he was going to um, beat and kill not only his wife, but his daughter because he found things around the house that just did not mesh with his religious aspects or his beliefs because they were voodoo based. Um, because I'm, from what I understand from the article, they, his wife and daughter, I guess she was her stepdaughter, um, are of those descendants or, you know, the culture for voodoo. Well, he decided to take a ball bat and crush their skulls in the middle of the night because he did refuse to allow them to practice their belief system or anything like that. Plus, he didn't want to look bad in front of his church because he had people of, you know, heathens or whatever he wanted to call them. So this does happen. There are these kind of people out there because this happened in like Brooklyn. Wow. And, you know, which that whole part of, New, you know, New York's a giant melting pot of so many cultures but yet mm -hmm. look there's still someone there who didn't appreciate that and it violated his belief system yeah so it, it's very sad because i mean here in the states you're not going to hear about a lot of these stories because they're not going to make news they're not newsworthy relevant stories for these times they're yeah. one-off yeah so i mean you're not going to hear about it but it does happen very often, but you're not going to hear about it. So, Hester, you want to tell us what's going on in the world? Uh, well, there's quite a few places that it's way, <laughs> way more problematic than it is for anybody here. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, typically here, if you have run into anything at all, it'll just be some asshole, Billy Bob, I'm angry because you don't worship my God type dude. Um, tell him the fuck off and be about your business, you know, like just go on. Now, other places, it's a little more intense. Um, I know, I, I think most people have at least somewhat heard of what's going on with uh, Nigeria and so, and and wow, you know, like it, it's bad. People are still getting murdered over there. Um, in fact, it's all over. <laughs> uh, Nigeria, yeah. Tanzania, um, South America too. Um, let's see, where else? I know India is having a problem. <laughs> they have full on police forces for hunting them down and that's yeah saudi arabia has a an anti-witch task force yes and how intense is that you know like that is terrifying and now i i did in my research i did see i want to say india uh and but it, it, i i apologize if i got it wrong uh one of the middle eastern countries where um the head of that country uh the they, they just passed a law, actually, that has finally made it um, illegal for witch hunters to do what they do. But that is literally just, re that is recent. And by the way, when she says do what they do, they beat and murder these women. Yes. They, they take their property, they take everything, and then they like beat them. Some of them get murdered, most of them get murdered. Yeah. Um, it's disgusting, it's gross. Um, and the thing is, there's a lot of places over there where um, property is, is kind of the fuel. Like they, they want that person's property, so they will lie and say that that person is a yep. bitch and just wait for the ensuing murder and then take their property. It's, yep. it's truly, it's disgusting at the root, like at the core of it. It's a mm -hmm. foul ass thing that's going on over there. Um, In Nigeria, especially, they seem, they seem to be targeting uh, 
younger people. Children. Uh, children, 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 teenagers. Uh, the, the article that I read was horrifying. Two girls, I think one was nine years old. Yes. Um, burned them alive. Yeah. It, so many of those articles during this research time, like small children, some of them were eight, ranging from four years old from what I was reading. And it's, it's terrifying for them yes. to and, and, and when we're saying murder, I'm not meaning these people are getting shot in the head. Yeah. They are tortured. Mm-hmm. They are tortured. They're beaten to death. They're lynched. Yeah. They are stoned to death. Burned alive. Like, can you comprehend that? Because you should really take a second and think about that. It's one th- like, look, I'm not trying to downplay any murder, but I would much rather catch a bullet to the brain any day compared to getting burned alive or lynched or stoned to death. Are you serious? Like, really think about the torture these people are enduring and then they die too. Yeah. Because, I mean, this isn't, they're not torturing you for five or ten minutes and then killing you. They're torturing these poor people until they die for days. And matter, yeah, and it doesn't matter how long it takes. Yeah, it, it's for days. So they, these poor people suffer, are suffering and enduring this multi-day course of regular beatings and torturement until their body physically cannot take it anymore, or they decide to, like Hestia said, throw them in a bonfire, or decide to, hey, I'm done with you. Let's throw you and lynch you up which is it's horrifying to think about and another but see another thing too is most of these people don't even practice like they're not even just like before it's a it's a lot of lying these people are regular ass people they're not even doing anything no these are people like you said <laughs> these are these people's neighbors and it's not a new they- tactic this is the way it's always no. been witch hunts are just an excuse to attack somebody and like I said, attacking somebody here in America, at least as, as as of at this point in time, is usually just somebody like trying to scuffle with you a little bit, talk shit. But there's places where they are murdering children. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten years old, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old. Or they're attacking single mothers and like people who are just trying to make ends meet, people who are just living their life. And because they want their property or they want this or they just think that bitch is weird or I just don't like her, they lie. And now you just got somebody murdered on a lie because you don't like somebody or because you want some shit. Like it's, it's really disgusting. It's driven but, by greed and hate. And it, hate is, yeah. And, It kind of goes back to how we kind of tell everybody don't you don't have to hide who you are but you do have to be cautious like most people are still very sketch about your fucking existence and then there's another percentage of people who are just like fuck them they're devil fucking weird witches who eat babies like we we have to kill them no, we eat da- babies They're on a evil. daily they, they, basis. <laughs> they think yeah. you're evil at your core. And and the thing is, once you understand that, and I get you don't really want to look at it that way, but you need to understand that just imagine for one second, like the one thing that you hate the most, whether it's like child molesters or fighters, whatever the fuck really just makes your stomach turn when you think about it. Not out of fear, just pure rotten disgust. Like you're some of the fucking earth. Right. Picture right. that. Picture that. That's how they feel about you. Yeah. Regardless mm-hmm. of who you are, you could be an amazing person. They don't give a fuck. They think you are some of the earth. They don't. They don't want you to exist. They they think that what we do is driven by Satan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, uh, there was one commenter on one of the YouTube videos who mentioned something about uh, that they had a friend who confessed to them that they were a witch and that they had done some spells on them and that she had confessed that she was 
forced to transform every night into a witch um, and do these spells on her. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we laugh because they're silly, but this is but what to these believe. people. Yeah, this is what these so, people honestly believe in. So I want to bring up something about a, um, there's a, a, a physician <sighs> based in Houston. And this actually ties Nigeria and the U.S. together. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about her. Her name is Dr. Stella Emanuel. Um, hope we're not going to get in trouble for saying that. Uh, I'll just say there's a physician in Houston. She's, she's all over the news. She, was she in the news a couple weeks ago? Yeah, she was touting how the um, anti-malaria drug um, yes, is effective gotcha. for coronavirus. I Don know who we're going. <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump um, was supporting her. Now, the interesting thing about this woman is that um, she is from uh, a, parts of, a part of Nigeria where there are rampant active witch hunts going on. And she continued not just to talk about this anti-malaria drug for coronavirus, but she was also talking about, quote unquote, demon sperm. Yep. Um, she was trying to bring the same mindset and thought process that is happening in Nigeria to here. She yeah. actually is a prominent figure in a church in Houston. And this is what she talks about. So it happens in other parts of the world. Absolutely. It is more horrific, 10 times, 100 times more hor horrific. But it's the 21st century. People travel. We have the internet. Uh, yeah. that we, we are not immune to that mentality. We have somebody here who is currently in a position of authority mm -hmm. who has these same feelings right now here in the U.S. Yeah, because I know one of the things she was saying is witches are causing, we're, we're causing all that's going on right now. Yes. We're part of this whole coronavirus thing. Yeah, I, I, I think she either insinuated or out like, or I think it was an insinuation that the witches were the cause of the coronavirus. Yeah, no, we're the cause of everything that's happened or in, and is happening the last what three and a half years mm. so yeah she's peddling it that way so can you only imagine how it is uh, it's mind-boggling because i could see her being back home in her own country or her own place being on one of those task force of going yes. through going through you know villages and towns you know i could see her being one of those people doing this to uh, these poor women and children and she's here in our country in houston a very big city in tech you know here as a minister she's a minister and, and in, she's, in a church yeah in houston. and she's preaching this mm -hmm. which is you know feeding into that because now we've got this woman who's predominantly all over tv now because don't get me wrong I started laughing when I saw that crap. I, I was just cracking up because it's nonsense. But yet she's all over TV now. People are Googling her. People are researching her. So now her horrible ideology is being exposed to more than just the people at her church. Yes. And we have never lived in a time where sharing ideas was as easy as it is right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that Which is a, that's all ideas. Great ones and fucking horrible ones. <laughs> right, right. Anybody who's right. on social media has seen somebody post some dumb shit. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, the dumbest idea can be posted and been broadcast to millions of people. And there's always going to be those some people that are like, that is the greatest idea. Oh, yeah. Let's go on a moped over the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? Exactly. So you've got those dumb ideas. You've got some good ideas, and then we've got these horrific, terrifying ideas that this woman's peddling 
from her own country to another country. Yes. And, and something else I wanted to point out too was even the mild cases of shit that happens in these other countries is worse than what happens here. Like, yeah. let's say I, I've read actually a few stories about um, kids being just outcasted from their family and now they're just homeless and they are like, you know, trying to survive by scavenging whatever they can and shit, you know, they live on the outskirts of town. And, and so even the minor cases in other places are, are, are pretty severe compared, compared to what we're dealing with here. Exactly. I mean, you've got these poor children, like you said, who have been outcasted, living in tent, you know, disgusting tent cities where they, they don't get food, they don't get water, all because their parents or their families decided they're not worthy because of something they either believed in or they assumed their child's into. Yeah, and, and again, I really, really, really want to drive home the point that most of the time, the people who are being accused, there's no evidence against them at all. Like the, no. the, the, the odds of them all, or even most of them actually being practicing witches is so low. Oh, yeah. So low. Like, Especially you know, for children. Just, yeah, these people are just casting all of their problems onto these children. Um, I read quite a few articles where basically a, the, the general idea is that due to the, the economy and, and everything that's going on over there, all the stresses and everything, is they have to put blame somewhere. And it's just easier for them to create that scapegoat. And unfortunately, most of the time it is children and most of the time you know, this is what comes from it. And it's really fucked up and it's gross. Um, it, it needs to change, but, you know, let's be real about it. What the fuck can you really do? So the, uh, so the, uh, the task force in Saudi Arabia, uh, um, they take it very seriously. Um, they're a special unit of the religious police. They pursue magical crimes aggressively. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the convicted face death sentences. Um, 2007, there was, uh, somebody beheaded for this, uh, two, yeah, uh, she was a pharmacist. Um, there were, uh, a couple of, um, Asian women who were convicted of these crimes. They received severe punishments, but yeah, these, this group actively seeks them out. Wow. See, and that's really sad. And like, the, I'm sure they're not the only one who has a task force. I'm sure there's so many other countries and stuff that have a mini version or something like that. You know, as of as of 2013, it's, I guess these task forces have processed at least 586 cases of magical crime. Wow. Ew, magical crime. That's Ew. what they're calling it. Magical and, crime. And they're expanding its battle against magic further. <gasps> so, yeah, it's not just Nigeria either. It is. No. There's a, a, a number, a number of countries. Yeah, was, um, they even have abuse cases in England. I think it's England. It's definitely somewhere in the European area. I want to say England, though, um, where the rate of child abuse amongst um, African immigrants is like skyrocketing due to them accusing them of witchcraft. And it's, and it's just, it really is everywhere. It is. So you, so you do need to be careful. And, and I think that's kind of the main point we're trying to make with this is like, we get it. It's a fad. It's popular right now. It's really cool. And anybody who lives this lifestyle knows that, yeah, it is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it's pretty fucking yeah. cool. Just like if, if you're a scientist and you, like, if you love science and you're a working scientist, you're going to love that shit. Like, it's just who you are. Right. So if, this, if this is who you are and you live this life, like, yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking cool. It's fun. Like it's it's a 
fun life to live. Um, but it comes with some shit. And you need to be smart about it. You need to be smart about it. And you need to be prepared about it and you need to be educated on it. Yeah, exactly. You need yeah. to, ch you need to yeah. choose your battles wisely. No, I mean, that, that with everything. Is, here's the thing, but here's the thing. The thing that we preach the most is do your fucking research. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, why in the absolute hell would you come into something and be like, I want to learn how to do all the spells, but you don't even know the history of what, what you guys have been treated like? And when, when we say when we say fighting. history, when we say history, we're not talking about the Salem witch trials, okay? Yeah, no. First we're of all, that's like, first of all, that's not everybody's history. That's just the history yeah, of, <laughs> of here, here in the and United yes, States. And yes, uh, there were also European witch trials, and that's just the history of there. But we're talking. I think what Hestia is referring to is the recent history. What? Yeah. What's, what's going, going down on? now? And then, like I said previously on a pre on another episode, was even though here in the United States there's a lot of places that it's it you know you know it's it's recognized and you know accepted in a certain way, you still need to look in your own your own state. Yeah. Because, like I've community. said, like I've said, I live in a place where my state just legalized it maybe 20 years ago, to where I couldn't go to jail. So you really need to do your research on your state, your city, and your county, because each place has their own set of laws, and that may be a secret law that you don't know about. So and there are a lot of secret laws. <laughs> oh yeah, not I mean, just on witchcraft. This weird shit. This weird random <laughs> shit, like you know, it. It's freaking 2020, and I still I live in a state that still has dry counties. So, I mean, there's still counties around here that don't even allow you to have alcohol. Let's take for granted the place where Jack Daniels is created. The facility is still there and can be made there, but the people that live there can't drink it. So, but yeah, you still need to take those precautions, learn your city, state, and county laws because... There's hundreds of little sub laws in every county and city that don't apply to the whole state themselves, but just to that city and county. And I honestly feel like if you're coming into witchcraft as somebody who is new, if you're doing your early on studies, that should be definitely top fucking three. You need to understand what comes with saying this out loud to people, you know? Because what happens if you decide that you want to be one of those people who, like, I'm going to put it on a fucking badge and a hat and a jacket, and I'm going to wear all three of these at the same fucking time. Mm. Like, because I want everybody to know I'm practicing and I'm a witch. Like, first of all, why? But anyways, so let's say you're that person and you're walking and somebody was like, oh, hell the fuck ass, no you're the devil, like, we have a problem. Are you, if you aren't prepared for that, if you don't understand that that's a reaction you can get, you're not going to be prepared for that interaction at the fuck all. And nope. it's not going to go well. You have to be prepared for certain things. This is one of them. This is a big one of them. If this is something where you're going to make it where if you're walking down the street, somebody can look at you and know even if you're not, if you decide to dress like you are, you're going to have this interaction too. Anything that's going to bring attention to that, you better be fucking ready. Exactly. Because not everybody's going to like it. Somebody's no. going to give you some shit about it. Are you ready to handle that? Are you really going to be able to do that? Or are you just going to be like, oh my God, this isn't for me. Where's my pink shit? I need my pink shit back. <laughs> I don't want to wear black anymore. Like, you know, like it, it's scary, but that's the that's what you need to understand. Is it can get real scary real quick. Because yeah. when we read about that lady, 
<laughs> the doctor lady, you know, like when we read about her, that kind of gives you a fucked up feeling because it's like, okay, um, is this going to take hold here? I imagine this, this doctor lady is good friends with the crazy people running the country. Yep. So, so think about that. Things, like, you need to know not only historically how you've been, how, how witches have been treated, because if this is something you want to be in, you, you have, there's just certain things that you have to know across the board. Exactly. How you're treated is one of them. Like, that's something that I always thought was kind of common sense. But again, common sense isn't that common. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so just even something completely far <laughs> removed from witchcraft, let's just say high school. Bella, actually, I'm going to ask you to play off of this because we've discussed this before. How were you treated in high school based on the clique that you were in? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think she wants to answer that. <laughs> Say that again? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make a point. <laughs> okay, basically what I was saying is that people need to know how any group that they're a part of was treated in both recent past, further past, currently, because that is a skill that you need to have across the board, not just when you're becoming a witch, but just as a person. Like, you were, like, a goth kid in school, right? How were you treated based solely on that? Fuck every other part of your personality. If somebody saw you were, like, goth kid, what was the reaction you got? I got chased a lot. <laughs> See? So, and, and, and like I said, that's without knowing anything about her. They're just like, oh, she dresses like that? We're going to chase her. We're going to beat her up. Yeah. But she knew that that came with being goth, and she was ready for that shit, so she could fucking run or fight or whatever the fuck the case was, like, she, you know, but, but she knew, so she had that reaction. Now, what if she didn't know that, and all of a sudden she was like, oh, hey, why are these people running up to me? And now you got clobbered because you weren't fucking prepared. Right. Of course, the, the names that they were calling me kind of helped me figure out what they wanted to do, too, so... <laughs> I made my point. My point is anytime <laughs> yes. you're getting into something, you need to know how those people are treated. Exactly. Because if you're going to be a part of that, that's how you're going to get treated. So you might want to know what to be ready for. Exactly. I mean, it just sucks because, you know, like Bella said at the beginning, none of us who were, you know, we were fine and dandy up until five, six, maybe 10 years ago you know, being under the radar and not noticed or not a big topic or thing. And so it just, it really sucks, dude, because these new, new people really need to realize what is going on, not just here in the States, but in the world and everything, because it's, it, it's a badge of honor to be a witch, but it's also one of those badge of honors that you, you need to be very precious and cautious with. Yes. So. Heavy is the head. <laughs> <laughs> whether, you're in, whether you're in it for the fad or not, it's not a fad, okay? Yeah. And, and it's not a fad. That's so disrespectful, too. Hmm. This, is, this is our lifestyle. This is the way we live. This is the way... It's been for a lot of us for, you know, like me and Bella for 20 plus years, you know, and Hestia for the last couple years. This, this is her life. This is our life. This is others who've been doing this for so long's life. And you're kind of mocking it. You're kind of taking it hey, and twisting it. I jumped in head fucking first and it's been a wrap. I was <laughs> like, it was, it was pretty quick. But still, but you no. jumped in all, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And you, girl, are always constantly researching, check, reading things, learning things, asking questions, you know. But you're also not out there slinging it to the world. You know. It's just, it's, it's one of those things that the newer people have taken it, thrown it out to the world, completely, like, 
no joke, like, like no easing the world into it. No, they've just thrown this shit wide open and it makes us a lot of us uncomfortable because we were perfectly cool in the dark and hidden because you see any of us out in public, you know, you're not going to know what we do, who we are. I look like a normal, boring ass mom, you know, Bella looks like a, you know, businesswoman and shit. And then Hesia, she just over there with all her pink, you know? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> so you wouldn't know what we look like. We, we, we don't project that. We don't, we don't have it tattooed to our foreheads like all these kids are doing these days. Because I have seen a few online on social media that have literally tattooed witch somewhere on their face. Uh, no. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got neck tattoos, but nothing past my this way. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. That's just like literally throwing it out there. I was just I was just looking up. Um, this is just from last year, 2019, and in India. I don't know. Maybe you came across this article, Hestia, um, but a couple of people in their 60s were dragged out of their home and beaten to death mm. for, uh, for witchcraft. I read that one. that one. That one is what made me close my browser last night. Yeah. <laughs> that's, wow. uh, that's scary and that's sad. And these were pre-planned. This wasn't like they heard one day. Like they were, they were stalking them. They were investigating them. They were following yeah. them. Yeah. Again, granted, that's that's another country, but dude. But who's to say we don't have people doing that to people here? You know, like Hestia found a whole online chat community discussing this kind of stuff. Well, you know, and like, like I said, just look in the comment sections of of these YouTube videos and such. I, you're not going to find. My personal belief is we're not going to find a lot of people threatening or whatnot um, on social media, at least in the here in the U.S. I mean, look how strict places like YouTube and and Facebook are. Those are going to be taken down almost immediately. Oh, yeah. But just because we're not seeing them doesn't mean that... They don't not. exist. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure on those communities that you know, Hestia stumbled upon, I'm sure some of them have gone to a public, you know, made public meetings about it. You know, their own little, we hate witches, let's burn them groups. So, I mean, who's to say we don't have them? But we don't, we're never going to know until something big happens. Yeah. But I'll be honest. I think that, um, you know, I agree with Hestia. You know, we are very, very fortunate uh, to be here in the U.S. where we have the types of freedoms um, to have this practice, to, to be involved in this practice. Uh, and, and, I, and I hid my beliefs and my stuff for a very, very long time. I hid it for my daughter even. Um, you know, for, for, for fear, I don't wanna say fear. It's not really, wasn't really like fear, like I was gonna, you know, get dead or something. But- I was um, gonna get dead. <laughs> <laughs> She, but, she says the hell I talk all the time and then really have the nerve to say, get dead. All right. Yeah. But it's, you probably hit it the same reason I did for a while, was you didn't want your child to be ostracized. No. No. I did not. I and absolutely did not. When I moved back up here with my kids, I did the same. I kept it quiet because I didn't want to ruin their chances of friendships and and you know play date invites and shit like that because well, I and a, a lot of her formative formative years were here in Texas as well and so you know it's not like I'm gonna sit here and, and announce it to I still don't announce it to my places of employment or whatnot 
but no. you know, this cer certainly wasn't going to be the place to do no. that. I mean, see, I got very <laughs> lucky to find a group for kids and families up here called the Spiral Scouts, which was a witchcraft pagan based kind of like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts for kids. So they do have them and the kids were part of it for a good two years and everything. So, I mean, that was grateful for that. But outside of that, like, you know, it was really scary because I don't want my kids to, you know, not make friends because their parents didn't want them to be around their mom. But I also want people to understand and realize, and maybe you will disagree with this. Maybe you'll find a lawyer to help you disagree with this. But we, we well, you'll get what I'm saying here in a second. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, and that is, I'm talking about witchcraft specifically. I'm not talking about your associated religions, especially if you're pagan. There are laws against discrimination uh, against, um, against your, your practices because, uh, you know, pagan religions are viewed as a religion. But as a practicing witch, aside from the religion, especially if you're secular, you know, um, I don't know if there's really legal, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Legal protection, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, for that means that. it's a lawyer. <laughs> For, for that, I mean, obviously, you know, if somebody, uh, if, if somebody harasses you, you know, there's other types of protection. But, you know, we're a quite a litigious country. We love to say, I'll just sue him. Okay. Um, but like, not everything is that is that cut and dry. Um, you know, if especially if you are just a witchcraft practitioner, no religious affiliation whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure how strong of an argument it would be to say that it is your quote unquote right to um, to practice out in the open or, or do whatever it is that you're trying to fight, you know, in school or what have you. Uh, just be cognizant of that, or just do like a like Mountain Gypsy and just pretend you're Wiccan. Yeah, just I'm just just nodding green. I mean, yeah, because I mean, like I said, dude, like because that well, is even, well, Bella. Even you've done that. You did that when you went damn straight, that. damn straight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, because uh, yeah. when when it comes down to you know formalities and stuff, and I have to put something, I go to pagan. Pagan's on there. Pagan's recognized. Pagan's and, protected. Exactly. So I'm um, okay. Cool. This is this is what it is. And you don't you, you don't think that we think of that when we answer those questions? It's like we're we're not. I mean, yeah. Granted, sometimes sometimes I'm doing it just because I don't want to have a conversation with you at your ass, and I'm just gonna go, yeah, sure. But um, you know, there's there's very very conscious choices that I make if I admit to yo yeah I'm Wiccan. Yeah, I'm Catholic. Um, very conscious choices because I am going to do what will protect me. Am I, am I a, a, is that a cop out? Am I giving in? I don't care what you think. I don't either. That's me Why? protecting Maybe my, I am. <laughs> me that's and me my protecting own. my ass and my family's ass. Protecting me and my own. Exactly. You know, that's, that's all it is. Like, because you don't need that, especially from my level of where I have to put it. I, mm -hmm. I have military stuff still. Yeah. I'm still a military, even though my husband's retired medically and stuff, I'm, I'm still part of the military life. And that kind of stuff is asked on every piece of paperwork you have to fill out for that crap. From our IDs to medical, to our insurance, to everything that has to be there. And you, ha you can't leave it. Most of the time they ask you, please don't leave it blank, you know, just in case something happens, you know. So yeah. that's what I put. All right, here. So that is me covering my ass and my kid's ass. <laughs> yeah. 
and you, you can, can think whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes you look at my kids with a, a better smile and like, oh, they're cute little pagans. How cute. <laughs> so go for it. I don't care. <laughs> what else we got? I'm waiting for my lawyer's response. <laughs> you have a lawyer? Yes, Tiffany. So I texted her to see what her answer was. So we got that covered. <laughs> I don't have a lawyer at the moment. All of my legal matters are resolved. Therefore, I have nobody. Oh, um, I have no legal. I just, she's my homie. <laughs> oh. So. I'm not like my mother who has always had some sort of, <laughs> sorry, legal activity going on. Here you go again. <laughs> Here she goes. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh. Oh, if I can't attack again tonight. Sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Uh, oh, that's really likely. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> okay, this is what Tiffany said. She, she said, even though you don't specify or associate yourself with Pagan, it still falls under the Religious Protection Act because that is your beliefs and your practice system, therefore, it is still covered by the Religious Protection Act. Well, then I guess you cut out everything that I said there. And then I gave everybody some wrong advice. She's like, this <laughs> never happened. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, cause she said it still constitute as your religious freedom and it's still protected. So magical practice is considered a religious practice. Mm-hmm. She's like, she said, because with magical practice, this is what she said. With magical practice, yes, it may not be paganism, but you still use a form of different specifics and aspects of different pagan religions, even though that is not your affiliation. Therefore, you are still protected. But what if you don't? What about chaos magicians? <laughs> I'd still protect it. Anything, anything having to do... Bitch, stop texting. <laughs> I asked one simple question. <laughs> She's all, anything, anything that is connected with paganism, witchcraft, or any of that kind of stuff, voodoo, hoodoo, all that is still protected as a religion. Well, okay. So go sacrifice your cow. Mm. <laughs> you can't do that. I just read an article. You can't do that. Because they claim it is a vi uh, it um, mm -hmm. for public health reasons. Oh, okay. so so there are you know unless like you were talking about earlier you know there aren't really that many laws on the books anymore actively on the books that have anything to do against witchcraft directly. There are other means though, as I just mentioned, we are a. a incredibly litigious country we love to sue we love our laws um there will be ways to find it and so some of the things that i've read um that they that they do try to do is like i said you know the public health stuff um fraud like with tarot card reading mm -hmm. um even with sales so if you notice, and they mentioned this on the article, if you notice, for instance, when you like, if you go shop on, on Etsy or something like that, many of those merchandisers will say somewhere in the comments that they are selling curios. Yeah. That is a legal protection. Yeah, because they can't say, oh, I've got bones for you. Well, no, not that. Because if somebody buys a spell oil, and then try tries to sort of turn around and say it didn't work. I'm going to sue you for fraud. They they have protected themselves by saying I sold I sold I sold you I sold you a curio. There you go. <clears throat> See? But yeah, that but but honestly, that is that is something else to consider. And I don't think people really think about those types of things. You know, we talked about the overt stuff. We talked about, you know, people accusing you 
of witchcraft um, and wanting to hurt you and harm you physically, there are other ways to hurt you and harm you. And this is probably something that, that is more typical of what you'd see in the places like here in the U.S., which is harassment, mm -hmm. um, trying to get you with other things. I, I just, I was, you know, just reading another article, a woman who made the mistake of moving into a neighborhood and being open with her neighbors about what she does. Turns out the neighbors did not look too kindly on that, were very hardcore Christians and called the cops on her 20 times in one year. Wow. That's why I don't announce it to my neighbors because they yeah. just think I decorate for Halloween 24 seven. But let me remind you how they, how the government got people like Al Capone or whatever. Did they get them on their actual crimes? No, nope. tax evasion. They're gonna look for other legal means you know, so we're not just saying be careful, watch out for your own physical protection. You know, the, there's there's other means to make one's life miserable. Absolutely. There's a ton of different ways. So. Damn it. Mike's cigarette keeps going out. And see, I don't say, I don't advertise it in my house or decorate. Like, I mean, I really do look like I live in, you know, Halloween town because I've got everything Halloween. But my neighbors just think I'm a freaking crazy, stuck in favorite Halloween lady because my neighbor's father is a pastor. And I've told you ladies about his crazy in the yard rants during the pandemic. I'm definitely not going to put that out there. <laughs> my favorite one that uh, I hear from people because they're like, there's, you see this all over Pinterest, like, you know a witch is living there because her door is purple. And so people are like, I'm going to paint my, my door purple. I'm like, why? Why don't you just put up a neon sign and say, come harass me? Because people, see, here's the thing. You think that people who are not into this don't know anything about it. Well, I'm going to challenge you on that. Because there is something known as apologetics, okay? Apologetics is a popular concept. It's, it's a concept. It's really a religious concept. But um, it's, it's, the same type of, it's the same type of process. And in a nutshell, you ever heard of the phrase, know thy enemy? Yeah. When people don't like something and they are dead set, prepared to do everything they can to go against it. One of the first things that you do is you learn about it. You, how do you, the best way to find out how to attack your enemy is you learn about your enemy. So if somebody is going to be looking for a witch, they're going to know what purple means, what a purple door means. It's you're advertising to the wrong people like i'm not gonna drive by and see a purple door and stop and stop and start knocking on the door hey sister no right right like well, who are you broadcasting to <laughs> you're broadcasting to the people that you don't want to see and here here's another thing too before anybody comes at us with the i did it for myself first of all know the fuck you didn't you did it for attention second of all if you were doing it for yourself why don't you just paint the inside of the door where you could see it instead of everybody fucking else. Yeah, that's what I thought. Shut up. <laughs> like me, who just likes fucking purple. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Sorry, uh, Bella. <laughs> but then, but yeah. Throw that out there. Then you have Miss Mountain Gypsy, who's just fucked all the way around because her favorite color is purple. Everything is purple <laughs> and black in my house, so I'm totally screwed if I, when I do eventually paint my front door. Yeah. But like I said, you know, some of the things that I was reading, I was listening to on YouTube, you know, if you think that they don't know what we do, if you need to think again, they know very well what we do. They describe it quite well. They interpret it differently, though. You need to understand that. You know, it's not, it, it's not a, um, 
it's not that they don't know. They have a misconception about it. So they know damn well what we do, but they believe that it all comes from. And one even said that they're going to tell you uh, as they were, you know, teaching their flock, you know, how, how to, how to converse with, with us is that we're going to tell them, we don't believe in your God. We don't believe in Satan. And they're like, you don't have to believe in Satan for Satan to control your life. Uh, you know what a really fa famous um, saying is in, in the Christian world? Is um, one of the greatest tricks, I'm paraphrasing obviously, one of the greatest tricks Satan ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Exactly. So don't fool yourself. They know exactly what we do which is why I don't try to have conversations with my family or I'm not even, I'm not even going to go there because I know it's a mute point. I love them regardless. And, and hopefully they love me regardless. Uh, many of them don't know about me to this day because I know that that will be a dead end street. Yeah. They are, they are, they are so hardcore, hardcore fanatical Catholics. Um, and that's fine. You know, that's, that's who they are. There's nothing that I can say. Absolutely. I completely get that, too, because um, my mother-in-law is hardcore Jehovah Witness. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa. Like, when you think, like, the Bible thumper, I'm coming to your door every day, that's her, for sure. Um, so I get it. And it's just one of those things. Like, I also will not have that conversation because it will just piss both of us off. Mm -hmm. It will go nowhere. And it will only er end in, in hurt. See, and I appreciate That's my family. Saying. They just don't give two shits because I've been doing this for so long. They just like, oh, it's just the way she is. We're just going to leave it at that. Yeah, with her, she, she knows I'm atheist. So off, off of that, we've had like one or two conversations about it. But we're kind of at the point now where it's like we don't discuss anything religious. So yeah. she doesn't talk to me about her God. I don't talk to her about what I do. It's none of her business. What she does is none of mine. It doesn't affect me. She's not knocking on my fucking door. So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> does she See? go around and do that? Absolutely. And I'm like, wow. Oh, oh hell no. And I live in the thing. freaking boonies. And I still literally at least once or twice a year get them people that have decided to drive up my dirt road and up my hill to knock on my door. So totally side story. So um, I was living in Sacramento like a long ass time ago when I, when Petra was actually born in Sacramento because I moved in with my mother, me and, and my husband at the time, her baby daddy. And, um, and uh, we, had just moved out from my mother's and I had this, this infant that, you know, new mom and everything. And I was going stir crazy and she wouldn't stop crying. That girl cried. Like I, she would sleep for maybe three hours at a time and then wake up and cry, 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 go to sleep, cry, cry, cry again. And anyways, so I was going stir crazy and I was lonely as fuck. And I remember these Jehovah's Witnesses coming to the door. And at first I was like, oh. And then I decided to answer the door. And they visited me for like a week straight. I never had any intentions of converting. I was just lonely. Isn't that sad? That really yeah. is. It's, you know, it's funny you say that. When I first moved to Phoenix, and before I started working and stuff, they would do phone calls. Like, I don't know how they would get phone numbers, you know, but they would do phone calls. And I started talking to this older Jehovah Witness lady who would call, like, who called one time randomly. I was like, oh, yeah, we can talk about each other's stuff, you know, because I told her, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a witch. And, you know, and she's like, oh, I would love to talk to you about that. So, like, for, like, two months, every Friday she called because I was so bored and lonely. I had no friends over there for a while. So I so said, we're so sad. You. We're so peaceful. <laughs> I totally Yeah, feel a little that. bit. <laughs> <laughs> I totally feel that one. Oh, 
because I did the same, but it was a phone call. Meanwhile, me and my sister were over there torturing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had my grandparents, like my grandfathers who were in the, like, the Korean War talking to them in Korean. So it was hilarious when they'd be all, okay. My sister would soon talk to Satan at them. <laughs> <laughs> my my, uh, my stepmom is a hardcore Catholic, and she was telling us a story one time of some Jehovah's Witnesses coming to her door, and so she turned the table on them, and she will, she's like, I would love to go to your church on one condition. You come to my church. And they left. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, good times. At least they... You know, at least in the, in the whole conversation of, like, me and Bella's sad, pathetic moment, <laughs> at least you could tell, at least there was, like, people willing to, you know, discuss that. Like, that's how I felt. I felt like a giant relief that she actually wanted to learn about everything like that. Like She, she didn't was, want to learn for good reasons, though. Yeah, she was trying to figure out how to convert you. <laughs> no, oh, and the funny thing is, by the third phone call, she knew she wasn't going to convert yeah. me, but we still yeah. stayed and talked. And like, she would ask questions, and she's like, "Oh, that was so cool." And you know, I'd ask questions, but I was like, "Yeah, Jehovah Witness, the kind of." Well, that's that's what happened with those people that visited me. You know, after coming by like four days in a row or something, they realized that like I wasn't going to be converted, so you know, they stopped coming around. But whatever, yeah. I had people to talk to. Like, we were lonely people. <laughs> we're just, you know. And Look, in- I didn't know anybody in Sacramento. Sacramento was but ugly to me. And- it really is. Sacramento is ugly. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, and I, had a, I had a kid that cried, like, constantly. So You're I like, like <laughs> oh, show me your Show me your watchtower shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty, pretty pages. Pretty pages. No. <laughs> Bunch of psycho babble. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. I no, I'm not. I'm not sorry. I don't care. Fuck that shit. Yeah, me fuck it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've read in my lifetime probably about fourteen different ones that supposedly pre- predicted the end of the world and like, you know, Jehovah Witnesses is awesome other ass shit <laughs> i think they've made the most predictions of the end of the world in it oh my god it never happened <laughs> yeah okay look this notes to add for this topic? okay no no okay no i guess we should say goodbye yep. all right well i guess that's all we got for you so just remember just be smart about just be smart please and cautious. Just be smart and be reasonable. Don't be naive. Be yourself, but don't advertise. Exactly. Bye. All right. Until next time. Bye bye. Oh wait. Oh my God. Wait. Oh, yeah. announce it. This is our season finale. It so is. Yeah. We won't be back until season three. Yay! You guys, we finished two whole seasons. Yes. Yes. Oh, and we hit a hundred subscribers on our YouTube. We did, but hopefully by the time this drops, you will have already seen the YouTube video where we do our Q and A. So, if you have not watched it yet, watch it. Yay! Bye. Bye. Later. Um, see you next season. Don't forget to check out our website at www.bitchywitchies.com. And that's Bitchy Witchies spelled B I T C H Y W I T C H Y S.com. Hey guys, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Go to Facebook backslash Bitchy Witchies podcast. And don't forget the I is number one in bitchies. And head to Instagram for Instagram backslash official B 
SW Podcast to keep up to date on every new episode on our YouTube and on Anchor. Check the description. All of our links will be available in our description for you to access easily.